Running a single PC stream can be a little more complicated than most people might expect. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to optimize your streaming software so that you can avoid dropping your frames on stream. I'm also gonna show you this hidden trick not known to many people that removes all of your lag on your live stream. I'm also gonna show you how to utilize your graphics card for your streaming setup so that you can get to streamline your live streaming process and still be able to game at the same time. I'm gonna show you the difference between NVENC and X264 and which one you should be using. I'm gonna discuss with you what you need for your bitrate settings, encoding settings, your preset and resolutions so that your stream runs nice and smooth and you still get to be able to game at whatever quality you want for the most part depending on what system you have, of course. So let's take a look. Now I need to preface this with the fact that not all PCs are the same, I get that. And not everyone has access to an RTX 30 series graphics card. You might have an altered GTX graphics card or even something older than that. This could still work, but keep in mind that you do need a decent PC in order to run a game and stream it at the same time. Most people are trying to stream with potato PCs and often that's not possible unless you're using maybe Restream IO to live stream on a browser rather than using the resources on your local PC. But I do have a video on how to have a decent stream with a potato PC. Link is in the top right in the cards. That video can be helpful if this one doesn't help at all, which is not gonna happen. <laughs> So you wanna be able to run your live streaming software. Most likely it's OBS or OBS desktop, Streamlabs desktop, what do they call it now? Now the first trick and probably the least known of all of the tricks I'm about to teach you in this video that no one knows about is run OBS as administrator. Right click on your OBS icon and run as administrator. And that's it. You're gonna remove all of your lag. The reason why this happens is because Windows prioritizes games over any other process, which is totally fine. That's that's what they're supposed to do. Windows is designed for, well, at least gaming on your PC. So that's why it's optimized that way. So what essentially you're doing is running OBS Studio as administrator, moving it from the bottom of the list in importance to the top of the list. That way it prioritizes your stream. You don't drop any frames. Sometimes you might have uh, uh, frame drop rates in your gameplay, which Sometimes it might be an issue, but if you want to let your stream have a perfect experience and you're still enjoying the game, I do the same thing. I don't drop any frame rates because my PC is still really good. So what is the difference between NVENC and X264 when it comes to encoding your live stream? X264 is for your CPU. So what it's going to do is use the CPU to encode the visuals and put everything together on your stream. You don't really want to do that because most of the time your gameplay is being encoded through your CPU and it could act as a bottleneck. Technically, your graphics card and your CPU can act as a bottleneck in and of itself. You obviously can't play one without the other, at least some decent games that require some graphics. Now, NVENC is designed to be used in your graphics card and you do need to use NVENC or NVENC new if you have that option because it's way better. What happened was OBS Studio had a collaboration with NVIDIA in order to optimize OBS and make sure that it's all smooth with people doing single PC streaming, including their game on that same computer. Now what happened was NVIDIA put a dedicated chip into the graphics card. So you don't have to worry about a bottleneck in your graphics card for your gameplay and OBS Studio running. OBS Studio gets a dedicated chip in that graphics card, which does all the the encoding on stream. You do need a graphics card with NVIDIA and that's primarily what you're gonna need for this in order for your OBS to run smoothly. If you don't have an NVIDIA graphics card, don't worry, the rest of this video is still helpful. I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks in order to change your settings so that it is good for your setup. Keep in mind that each setup is unique and of itself, so you might have to alter these and do some trial and errors. One thing I'd like to note is that it is a good idea to set up a dummy account for streaming. Stream to that account so that you're not you know, streaming to your viewers and you're trying to fix this and everyone's watching you live and it can get boring. Now one other trick to optimize your streaming software is to have minimal or simplistic overlays on your stream. If you're familiar with my streams on Twitch, I stream there four days a week. I keep the design pretty simple and there's nothing too complicated. And everyone these days are starting to move towards a more simplistic design. So it's not out of the ordinary at all. It does help your OBS and it's not so taxing on your computer with all these crazy graphics, stinger transitions, alerts and everything else. When those do happen on OBS, 
it does take a toll on your computer. Sometimes it might not be as much, but when they add up with different overlays, it could definitely bog down your system. One other little trick, which might be useful for some people and might not be for others, is right clicking on your preview screen in OBS and hiding the preview. This will give you about two to 4% more on your graphics card or your CPU, depending on what encoding you're using. And this might be helpful to you. In some cases, you might wanna be able to preview on your OBS screen and you know see what stream is seeing. So in that case, it's not gonna be as helpful, but if you don't have to you know see what's on the screen, maybe it's a very simple screen and you have maybe two scenes and you know which one you're in, pretty easy. Now, one thing you need to consider when having a single PC stream is your upload speed to your internet. You need to have decent internet. There's no way of getting around this. A lot of people are trying to fix all of their settings in OBS and they are trying to optimize their computer, but then realize that their internet is not powerful enough to live stream at a high bit rate. One thing I would recommend is having a 20 to 25% lower bit rate than what your upload speed is on your internet. So for example, if you go to speedtest.net, run your speed, run it a couple times to make sure you get a consistent number. And then what you can do is, let's say for example, you have 5,000 megabits per second upload speed. You wanna make sure that the bit rate you set for your stream is set to a point where you have a 20 or 25% headroom between that max of what your upload speed is on your internet. One other trick I need to mention for uploading to Twitch is uploading with a bit rate higher than 6,000 is going to be useless. Twitch's maximum is 6,000, so don't go over that. You're wasting your, your bandwidth, you're wasting your computer resources. It's not going to help you, so don't go higher than 6,000. Now, when it comes to resolution, keep in mind that 1080p is more than twice the size of 720p. This is important when considering your bit rate. For example, you're streaming at 4,000 bit rate. You're going to have to allocate that 4,000 bit rate into 1080p video footage or a 720p video footage, depending on what settings you choose. If you have less bit rate in 720p than 1080p, 720p is gonna be less grainy it's not gonna be as full an image, but 720p streaming on Twitch is totally normal. There's nothing wrong with that. So if you're having an issue with grainy game footage, that might be something to consider. If you're streaming at 1080p, try down to 720p and see how that changes it. So here's some things to remember. Your encoder determines if you're using your GPU or CPU, and it depends on what graphics card you have. If you have Nvidia graphics card, definitely use the NVENC new if you have that option. Your resolution is the number of pixels in the image. The higher the resolution, the more bitrate you're gonna need to avoid grainy images. Your bitrate is how much data you send to each frame. The higher the bitrate, the better quality your image is gonna be and the less grainy it'll be, but it takes up more resources. And the CPU preset tells you how hard your computer needs to work in order to put all of the images together. Let me show you what I'm talking about when I say your CPU preset. Changing the settings on your OBS can help you a lot. So let's take a look. The way you set them up is let's go to settings and then if we go to output here in the streaming tab, make sure that your encoder is set correctly. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, then make sure you have NVIDIA new, that's uh, H.264 right over here. If you don't have an NVIDIA graphics card, you'll probably get just H.264. Also works, but you're using your CPU if you're doing that. And usually, C well, any anything, CPUs or graphics cards can be bottlenecks. But if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, that dedicated chip for streaming isn't going to be interfered with anything else. So you get to streamline your streaming process, pun intended. Having a constant bit rate is going to be more efficient for what you have. If you do, uh, the option here can be lossless, constant bit rate or VBR. VBR is variable bit rate. So when the screen or OBS senses that more bitrate is needed. For example, you're playing Escape from Tarkov. There's a lot of trees and foliage. Same thing with PUBG. It's gonna have to have a lot more bitrate in the image to get all of that detail. Having a variable bitrate will increase it at that point in the stream and then decrease it when it's not necessary so that you can optimize your stream. But in some cases, it can get too high and at that point, your stream is gonna lag. And then lossless is just completely like full out, full power, that's it. And you don't wanna do lossless unless you're really streaming at a high resolution and using a monster PC to do that. So let's stick with constant bitrate. I've got mine at 6,000 bitrate, which is the maximum for Twitch, don't go higher than that. Your computer might not be able to handle 6K bitrate, so take it down, uh, do some experimenting to make sure that your bitrate works for you. Keeping in mind again, like I mentioned earlier on in the video, that your internet upload speed also matters. Make sure it's 20 to 25% lower than what your internet speed is. 
Now, a preset can be very helpful and depending on what computer you have and what specs it has, that's gonna change. This is gonna take some trial and error. That's why I suggested creating a dummy account to stream to so that you can see which quality works better. So let's take a look and dissect what this is. So your preset, I've got it on quality. I can choose max quality. I don't really need to do that, uh, but you can choose performance, which increases the performance of your computer. And it does take down a little bit of the quality of your live stream. Max performance is when it is going to reduce your live stream quality more significantly than just performance, uh, but your computer will be able to function more efficiently. Now your profile is also gonna be how uh, strong your computer is gonna have to work in order to put all of this together. So your overlays, your alerts, your face cam, your gameplay, when it puts it all into one video uh, file or the footage, it's gonna choose how well to work on that in order to stitch it all together. Now, if you choose the high profile here, it's gonna work harder to put all of that together. So make sure you have at least a decent computer to do this. Or you can choose baseline, which is at the bottom there. Uh, you can have less computer resources and still get your stream out in a decent quality. And main is kind of an in-between section. That's probably a good place to start. If your stream is struggling, you can go ahead and put it on baseline. It's still gonna work just fine. Now your video resolution also matters. So right here in the video tab, you can see that my base canvas is my monitor resolution. So I have a 2K monitor. That's what my base canvas resolution is going to be. Now my output resolution or my scaled resolution, that's going to be for recording. The reason why I've left it at 1440p is because that is the resolution I'm going to be exporting my videos or recordings, not my live stream. What I've done is in the output section here in streaming, I've made sure to rescale my output size to 1920 by 1080. That way it's not streaming at 2K, but I can still record when I click the record button in 2K. That's for most people who have a 2K monitor. Uh, sometimes you might have to go to the settings and switch back and that can get annoying when you wanna go from recording 2K to streaming at 1080 or even 720p. And sometimes you might forget to switch it and you stream it to 2K and people can't watch it. I've made that mistake before. So this rescale output on your stream settings, that's gonna be very useful. Now back in the video tab, you need to make sure that you choose the corresponding section here so that you don't worry about losing quality and your performance on your computer. Now to put these simply, it works from top to bottom. So the top one is gonna be more optimized for your computer, but it's not gonna be as good for your stream. It's not gonna be as high quality. And then working your way down, it gets better and better. Having 36 samples is the highest resolution you can get in OBS here. So those also do play a massive role when it comes to streaming. So make sure you choose the downscale filter accordingly. And then if you're streaming gameplay, I wouldn't go less than 60 FPS. 60 FPS is kind of the baseline. Uh, if you've adjusted all of the settings and you're still getting lag, going down to 30 FPS might help your stream a bit more. You might obviously lose a few frames when it comes to your gameplay streaming to Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, wherever you're streaming to but it might still optimize your system as opposed to not even being able to stream it at all so worst comes to worst you can change the fps from 60 down to 30 and 30 fps does work fine if you're doing just chatting but when it comes to gameplay 60 is optimal but if you can't manage that then 30 is a, a decent alternative now if you're still confused as to what presets bit rate and your encoding settings should be i have a link down below it's to twitch's website on suggesting how you can have your settings said depending on what stream you're looking for and how strong your computer is. Now if none of this has helped or maybe you're still encountering some type of issue that I haven't addressed yet, don't worry I have a discord server my support team and I are there. Feel free to join it, link is down below, will help out or jump on my streams. I stream Monday to Friday uh, almost every day actually and I'll catch you there. We have a lot of fun and also do giveaways live on stream. I'll see you next time but until then make something great. Ampus Beats which is a record label I've created just for you. All of the music that I release is gonna be DMCA safe and royalty free. In addition, it is gonna be free to download. You don't even have to pay anything to use the music. The first album is live now and it's called Amped by Ampus Beats or Murray Frost. Just search on your favorite music streaming app like Spotify or Apple Music and you'll find the album right there. And very soon from now, we're gonna release a lo-fi album. So lots of music coming out. So go listen to it all. Links are down below. Put it on loop and listen to all of the music that is out or just having some chill moments, relaxing to some nice lo-fi music.